Welcome to Things You Should Know, Accounting Edition. Today, we will cover the big ledger, the master reference file for all transactions. Dum, dum, dum. The general ledger. The general ledger provides a permanent record for all accounts used by Jell-O's coffee shops and, of course, all other businesses. A general ledger can range from anything from an Excel spreadsheet up to a multi-million dollar piece of software for accounting. The first thing we should do is make a distinction between the general journal entry and the general ledger. The general journal entry is a record of the initial transaction, while the general ledger is a final record, similar to a rough and final draft for a writing project. When the transaction in the general journal entry is approved, it is moved from the general journal to the general ledger, and that is called posting, making the final record of the transaction. The general ledger itself is not a single file, rather it's a conglomeration of all the sub-accounts such as equipment, cash, payroll, etc. When reviewing the general ledger, you're reviewing the entire data stream of all accounts the business keeps. There are many types of general ledger account forms. Jello's second in charge, Sean, has decided he wanted to use a balance ledger form. A balance ledger form shows the balance of the account after every entry. It keeps a running tally of the debits and credits. All ledgers should do the following. Track the account name and number. Have the columns for posting references, dates, and descriptions. Columns to track both the debit and credit for the transactions and the resulting debit and credit balances. And this should be for every transaction. Let's take a look at our same general journal entry and the corresponding two sub-accounts in the general ledger for Sean's purpose. Sean decided on February 12th to enter a price of new equipment costing Jello about $20,000, the coffee 2000. In order to do this, Sean entered the debit amount up for the coffee equipment and credited the cash paid out in the credit section. To do this, you'll need to do the following. On the ledger, enter the date of the transaction. So you'll copy the date of the transaction from the journal to the ledger, and this would be the cash account ledger and the equipment. So you'd copy the date, February 12th. Enter the description if applicable. In this case, it's for the Magical Coffee Machine 2000. On the ledger, enter the general journal page. That would be J1. This would match up to your general journal, page 1. J is commonly what's used for the general journal entries. Sometimes if there's other sub-accounts, it might be a different letter. On the ledger, enter the amount of the debit. So in this case, we're going to debit Jell-O's Coffee Shop $20,000 worth of equipment. $20,000. You go up here, purchased equipment $20,000. Once again, you need to match the post reference $150. This is the account number. Matches this account number. This should match your chart of accounts. You would then take, and if there was any prior debit balance for equipment, You'd add that to here, and the total would be here. For ease of sake, in this example, it's just this one equipment, but I'll show you a better example in just a minute. Now, you're going to do the same for the cash, of course. You'll take the cash, take the date, date the cash account, give it a description, the coffee machine 2000, the post reference back to general journal entry page 1, credit $20,000, and keep the running total, which at this case is $20,000 because I have no other examples. And up here in the general journal, you will tell which account you posted it to, account 101, account 101. You'll repeat this process for all transactions into the future. This is your future life, guys. Welcome to it. Now, we're going to look to the general ledger itself. In front of you, I have an example of a part of a general ledger. I didn't want to copy out the whole thing for you guys. It's a lot of information. When you look at the general ledger, you'll note that the balance sheet accounts appear first, followed by the income statement accounts. This will speed the preparation of the trial balance and the financial statements. The order normally would be something like assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenue, and expenses. Now, if you look at this example, I have only put down the assets for Jell-O's coffee shop. You'll notice you'll have the date, description, the reference to the general journal entry, debits and credits, and then the balance. You'll see here for cash, we have four transactions. You'll see that we have the posting reference back to the general journal entry page. As the general journal entry gets longer, general journal goes farther. This will say J2, J105, J1230. You'll see that you'll debit the cash. The initial investment was 100000 so the cash balance was 100000 And then as we credited the account for cash, it lowered the cash balance down. So this means the last line here should be the most accurate version of what's in the bank. We should have $45,000 in the bank. Here you'll notice supplies, same thing, dated, description, where the general journal entry was, the amount it was debited, and a balance, and the equipment. You can see Jell-O's initial espresso machine purchase that we covered earlier in our series, the 22000 with the credit balance or the debit balance. Here you'll see the same thing. Sean just purchased a coffee machine 2000. He might be in a little trouble. Same date that it was done on, 
general journal entry page, 20,000, but the running total will be 42,000 because it would be all of this combined here. You'll notice that these accounts will match up. So cash 101 matches cash 101. Supplies is 130 for the chart of accounts, matches 130. And equipment is 150, matches up to the 150. Just so you know, if it's a liability account, you, the credit will generally be the side that's accounted on, just like you would for the transactions and the T accounts. This is the end result of all your work, the general ledger. Now, correcting journal and ledger errors. We all understand that sometimes mistakes are made. Errors are accidentally written when recording the transaction into the journal. For example, you put the wrong amount, the wrong account name, or even the wrong description. There are methods to correct this depending on when the error is caught. If the error is discovered before the entry is posted and you're entering it by hand, just neatly cross out the item and, rec and write the correct data in. Do not erase the error. This is to ensure honesty and provides a clear audit trail. Don't worry, everyone makes mistakes. If the error is discovered after it is posted to the general ledger where this is a permanent record of account, don't fret, a new transaction entry will be needed and it's called a correcting entry. And it'll basically be like the entry we did for the coffee machine, but instead it will move whatever mistake was to the correct area. Once again, never delete or change the info. Under no circumstances are erasures permitted in the journal or the ledger. All record must be kept. All right, that's where we'll wrap up the general ledger. Join us next time when we how to handle accounts receivable, cash receiving, and sales. Until then, take care.